Hi everyone, uh, welcome to my studio, Trinity Mountain Arts. Um, today I'm going to be kind of walking through the process of mounting a black-tailed deer. Up here in Northern California, we don't have, uh, well, at least over on the coastal area, which I'm a little closer to, um, we have mostly blacktail, a lot of black bear and elk in this area. Uh, we don't do, uh, most of the mule deer are east of us, and we do a fair amount of mule deer also, but black hell is the most common and that's what we'll, you'll see in my shop quite often. Uh, black tailed deer present their own set, special set of problems when we're dealing with them. Mostly, uh, we talk about the ears are much thinner than mule deer. There's less fur on them. They're a thinner furred animal all the way around any way you look at it. So these deer um, have to take special care when you're dealing with the liners and they tend to have a lot of tears, a lot of little sores in them and defects, so um, they become very tricky. Uh, one of the things that's important when mounting black tail deer is that you put in uh, real thin ear liners. You don't want to have anything too bulky or they won't, the edges will be too thick. Also, you have a tendency for the edges to kind of curl and you can work, because of the thinness of these, after these are mounted, even dried, you can work them a little bit if they're, if they've kind of curled on that outer edge. So. Um, they're just ways to kind of work with, but it, but again, they create their own their own unique problems, and we have to work with that here. That's uh, they're they're less forgiving in that you don't have as much fur to cover up. I am a commercial taxidermist, so um, I do this actually on the side. I'm a school teacher during the day, and then have my summers uh, to kind of work on um, on this, and also during during the season I take work in, so I'll go and work you know, eight, nine hours of school and come and put in another three hours here in the shop. But this is kind of my relaxing uh, job. It's a uh, way I just kind of come down. I only take enough work in that I can handle. I don't try to overdo it. When I retire, I'll bring in a little bit more. But um, So things we've done recently, uh, I usually do one demonstration for my kids every year. I did a groundhog, which some of you may have seen the video on that. And there's the finished animal right there. And, uh, do a close-up of him. There he is. Isn't he cute? Yeah. Okay, get you back around here, seeing what's going on. So, uh, I started off at uh, Northwestern School of Taxidermy, which a lot of guys have years ago. I was, uh, I believe I graduated from there in 1977, and I did that all through correspondence. Very, uh, a very gr good way to start, but at the time there was not a lot of technology, so um, following, uh, and now that we have video and DVDs, it sure makes a difference. You don't have, uh, there's a, it just takes a lot of the guesswork out of it, and, uh, but I learned from reading, and I still read today. Um, I love the Breakthrough Magazines, Tax Room Magazines, which are, really are giving all the new technologies and the up-to-date techniques. I love this. Um, unfortunately, the hours it takes to compete, which this is really about competition quality, but it's great for beginners and all kinds of, um, you know, all levels of taxidermy. But for those that are competing, um, you know, just the amazing quality of work. But when you look at a mount like this, you know, you're talking uh, several months to several years of work before these guys will compete. I've heard of one individual who it took him three years to really get his mount finished before he competed with it. Um, the amount of time you just can't make a living trying to do that, you know. Um, so uh, you don't see many guys, uh, you, I don't know, I think some guys are just in it for the art end of it, not so much for the, uh, you know, to do it as a business. And me, I'm looking for that middle ground, I'm looking for that place where I can actually um, uh, mount an animal. Uh, make some money to help support that, and yet I don't want to have so much work that I can't take the time that I need to on the mounts. And uh, so um, I'm trying continually learning, continually growing as a tax trimmer and picking up on new ideas. And uh, it's a frustrating business in the sense that um, there's always more you can improve on. And uh, so customer can come in and just really love the work, and sometimes. Um, you know, I, because I've dealt with it hands-on up close, I know where all my little flaws are and things, but, um, but it gives me a goal, I set up goals and I work to improve on 
Um, but again, uh, it's, um, it's a very rewarding business. Um, but it takes a lot of years to really get it down. And there's just so much of it. It's not just one thing. I mean, I'm, I do everything. Uh, so um, I even, you know, I did fish for a long period of time. I backed off of that. And then in the last couple of years, I brought it back with a lot of new techniques. And, um, and I've just kind of rebolstered that. Um, but I've learned so much about fish painting uh, that it's just revolutionized how I, how I do my work with when it comes to fish. And so I... Uh, um, I'm willing to get involved with that again, um, but uh, not on the level that I did where I was doing 18 foot great whites and marlin and all that. Just I don't want to start up a huge fiberglass resin boat shop. You know, I don't make any of my own molds anymore. Um, I uh, I purchase those and go out for them. Um, so. I wanted to uh, let you know that first of all, I, I'm going to, we're going to be introducing you to uh, the mounting process. I'm, I'm not actually going to go through on a black-tailed deer and and show you how to do all the form, you know, from the start to finish. Um, all of these forms before I even get started, like for example, this one here is exactly the way it came from the factory, but all this has to be roughed up. Uh, we have to redetail some of the lines and the muscle texture get the eyes ready and the nose, and we put a septum in, or we, I cut the noses out, and I set an artificial septum, which is that cartilage that goes through that center of the nose, and then you got the inner nostril has to be sculpted back in. And a lot of this work, I first, I rough this out, I mount the animal, and then I go and sculpt the inner nose in later. So these, um, these noses on some of these deer, this, these aren't finished, these are unfinished, so you've got the rough nose, on there. The outer portion needs to be correct. You've got to watch the proportions on those on both sides and the thickness of these. Otherwise you have to go back and sculpt those in. If there's any shrinkage in this I use, uh, I use Mod Podge to bring those back out and uh, once those dry then I can paint right over the top of it. So that said I have special tools that I use for the eyes to get them set. There's different ways to do that. There's some actually some eyes that have um, a grid painted on them that allow you to um, set the eyes um, a little easier. Um, although I'm not, I, I know that was um, out there, um, I can't remember, uh, you know, 10, 12 years ago uh, they were using those. I don't see a lot of them on the market today, so I don't know if guys are going to something different, but I prefer the tools, uh, the hand tools. So here's another one that knows up close and then I'll go in and I'll sculpt in this inner nostril area and then but there's a septum back in there you might be able to see it it isn't colored yet um, it's just white and I'll put that all back in so these are just roughed out uh, I'll go back and do the finish work on these take all this carding off and and uh, get those ready there but uh, this here is a, a typical black tail you would see in our area right here so um, we just start with the form uh, we got the cape and we have the antlers. Now, the, the mount that I'm going to be using the demonstration is actually split down the back and this, the customer had already done that. I prefer not to have my animals split down the back. I prefer to do a V-cut right to here about this point and then I tube skin them so these can be skinned out. You, you cut, the, you know, tube this all the way up uh, all the way up here to the neck from the inside. They cut the head loose from the inside but not through the skin and make this incision and roll it out over the end of the face. Or they bring me the head in and then I take care of that. But So here's an example of a tube skin hide. This one here. Um, let me set this up. So here's a tube skin hide. You can see that the incision, there's a short incision in the back right here. Plus there's no cut down the back. Now this is very critical for these California black-tailed deer because they're very thin and you'll see those, that stitch if you put it down here. So the less stitching you have to do, the nicer that's going to be when it's finished. And I'll take some real tiny stitches on the back here when I close this up. These ears are turned inside out, that's why they look kind of funky like that. So, so uh, we soak these hides, uh, thin the nose, the ears, take the cartilage out, um, sew up any holes and then I uh, roll them up, I freeze them, I take them back out of the freezer and they'll usually get a little more stretch, especially from the uh, wildlife gallery tans that I use. And um, so um, that's it.
So we're going to get started on this and I'm going to show you the process. I may have to break this down into two part, uh, two part video. Uh, otherwise it's just going to be quite a long stretch. But, uh, so I'll show you the process from getting the ear liners in, uh, getting, it, uh, getting the form, uh, the, the clay work in the eyes in and how I do that, and, um, and then stitching it up and finishing it. So here we go. We'll see what we do.
that helps to hold <coughs> that inner skin right up against this for a few minutes until it sets. The epoxy will set up here within 15 minutes. 15 minute epoxies. I'm going to put these together. I like to push them together to help kind of put pressure against it. And I recheck these edges here. set that up there for tomorrow and we're ready to mount it up in the morning throw out the epoxy